So with circular kinematics, we want to have the same sketch organized solve steps for solving this as we did for linear kinematics, or just kinematics. So in our sketch step, we want to start by drawing the circular motion. So this might include right having a before versus after if we have some sort of change, and right labeling the drawing. Being able to understand what's going on with this is going to help us a whole lot because again our brains know how to do physics. They don't know how to do symbolic math involving physics. When we're sketching we also want to draw graphs of our angular acceleration alpha versus time, our angular velocity omega versus time, and our angular position theta versus time. Once we have that in our organized step, right, for all circular motion, we have our equation a sub r is equal to v squared over r equals r omega squared. This is the centripetal acceleration needed to keep things moving in a circle. And then we can ask ourselves a couple different questions. If our omega is constant, right, we are saying alpha is then zero, then we get the relationship that omega is equal to two pi over the period. And sometimes nice just to rewrite this as t, period t is two pi over omega. If instead our alpha is constant, then we can't use this, right, because our period would then be changing because our omega would be changing. But we get two different separate equations very similar to what we saw for uh, linear kinematics. We have the final angular velocity equals the initial angular velocity plus alpha times time. And then we have the final angular position equals the initial angular position plus initial angular velocity times time plus one half times alpha t squared. So just like we did, whichever of these equations we need to be using, we want to write knowns and unknowns. And again, if t is not known, we want to write it as unknown. Then as we go to solve this, our first thing that's going to help us out is, right, we want to convert all of our numbers into SI units. This is our first real experience with having to deal with, say, things like revolutions per minute, hours, days, things like that. We want to convert all of that into seconds and also have our radians and things like that. And then once we have that, we want to find relations in our organized step that relate our unknowns to knowns. And once we have all that, we want to just, of course, write solve, right, do the actual math. So with these steps, we can break up any sort of circular kinematics problem into easy bite-sized repeatable steps to help us solve.